Okay, so next is the panna cotta. And this is um, kind of become my signature dish. Everyone's probably had one or seen them or heard of them. It's just scalded cream that's um, set up with a little bit of gelatin. And um, from there, it can vary widely. I think the general secret is, well, to mine is to, well, one, the combination of flavors is amazing, but the secret to what people remember is to not put out too much gelatin. A lot of chefs, because bad things can happen if you don't do it right, bad things meaning some will break and you won't be able to sell them and you'll lose money. Um, uh, they tend to add a lot more gelatin than necessary. It makes them a little rubbery and often you see them all over town. Um, and even my son, when we go to di dinner, anytime they have a panna cotta, he'll order it because he knows mine. And I'll go, that's not a panna cotta. And the waiter will go, what do you mean? It is a panna cotta. And I'll go, don't worry. You know. <laughs> this is uh, pouring cream with a little bit of skim milk in it. It's three to one. So three parts pouring cream, one part skim milk. And that's just to lighten it up. From there, I just add it into a pot. And scald it, which means just kind of bring it to a boil without stirring it and hopefully not having it boil over. So let that go, add some sugar. You can add more sugar if you like things really sweet or less sugar if you don't like things very sweet. You could use honey instead or brown sugar if you want or whatever you want to use. There are proper measurements that I've already worked out if you really want to follow a recipe, but you don't have to. You just kind of experiment around with it and make up your own, which is what I had to do to come up with it. So that's going, it's got a little sugar, cream, and skim. This is a vanilla pot or vanilla bean. Just take one of those, they're fresh. Um, definitely don't recommend using vanilla essence or vanilla extract or vanilla uh, whatever. There's like little seeds in a jar and stuff. I don't think those products are very good at all. I just direct, same with uh, buying a nice bottle of wine for your dinner party, I reckon you can afford one vanilla pot if you're gonna cook for people and try to impress them. So what I just did was split it in half scraped it. These are the seeds. They don't look like seeds. They look like paste right now, but they will look like seeds in a minute. Um, scrape the other side. Drop it all in there. We're going to strain that out later. And then let that come to a boil. In the meantime, I'm going to make the other part, which is lavender honey. So now I just take my favorite, um, my favorite honey and warm it up and I use dried lavender. You can use fresh lavender in season but there's a few varieties of lavender so you might want to study that. Some are better for soaps and perfumes and some are better for cooking um, but I have it growing in my yard everywhere because it's one of my favorite things. Um, so I take the dried, you can get it from Harvey's um, and this is actually from Harvey's. I just take a little bit and I sprinkle it in there. From Harvey's? Yeah, it's from Harvey's so you can buy it in most stores around I think even in supermarkets now. Um, it's pretty much like making, maybe like making tea or I'm just steeping the dried lavender in the honey as it warms up. You may be able to smell it because the lavender um, perfume will come out of it. And you don't want to boil it or anything, you just want to kind of warm it up. And then, just probably about now. And then just let it sit. So this is gelatin. And this is the secret to the panna cotta. This is what makes it stable. This is what makes it rubbery or not rubbery. Um, so there's powdered varieties that works as well. You use them a little bit different. Um, pastry chefs seem to go back and forth every few years which ones they prefer, whether it's uh, leaves or powder. But I prefer the leaves. So what you do is you soak them in cold water, wait till they're soft. We'll do that in a moment. And then after this is boiled, you turn it off, let it cool just for 30 seconds or a minute. Then I drop them in there, whisk it in. Make sure you whisk it really good so it all breaks down. And uh, then when that chills, it'll set up and uh, be like jelly. So see the gelatin now is kind of soft. You don't want to over soak it because it will just dissolve in the water. But at that point, we've hit the boil. Turn that off. Drop in the gelatin. We're not going to be able to set this here and show you because it takes, you know, overnight's best. You could probably rush it and get it done in about four hours if you have a good fridge. But, um, but that's the basis of it right there. And then, so we've got the honey, we've got the panna cotta mix. At that point, what you do is pick your favorite mold, 
whatever you want to mold it in. And that is also where the fun part really comes in, and you'll see when you see mine, if you haven't yet, um, that's where I had the most fun figuring out which mold to use, and I've tried everything. Um, you know, these are common, these are normal. You'll see these in other restaurants, you just use some canola spray or um, something like that to make them non-stick, that way you can get it out easier later, or a ramekin. And then, um, or you can use this one. This one's been pre-sprayed. This is the one I actually use. So if you want to try to do mine, that's what you gotta find. So at this point, you just strain this out, pour it in your mold, set that in the fridge, leave it overnight. The next day you come back, it'll be, it'll be set. Have two. And uh, we'll show you the finished result in a moment. It's definitely the day of and here's one I prepared earlier. Yeah, well, you had to prepare this earlier. But because this is a big hit lately, especially um, I'm pushing it at this event, um, I thought it would be nice to share it with you all. So this is a pomegranate. The reason I use the pomegranate is because it ties in with the whole rest of the dish and the shape of the dish. But um, I did a lot of research on it. From my research, it indicates that, that this is the original forbidden fruit in the Adam and Eve legend. You can see these are the first of the season, so they're like just getting ripe. So, um, but what they are, they're a bunch of seeds inside. When they're really, really ripe, which will probably be another couple of weeks, they'll come out um, much redder and very sweet. It's what they make grenadine out of. So, um, so it's, it's a flavor most people are familiar with, but they're really nice. There's a couple of ways to um, clean them. The best way I've found is a bowl of water. Turn them upside down in there and break them up with your fingers. They just break easily. The reason I do this though is they'll ruin a chef's jacket in about five seconds. And, um, yeah, it's can get pretty messy with yeah. that. <laughs> but the other thing too is the seeds fall to the bottom and the pith, pith, or pith, pith floats. So you can just skim it off the top. Right. Yeah, so you don't get stains all over yourself. So then to plate the dish. So this is a finished one. So as you can see, it's set. It's rubbery, or not rubbery, or actually not rubbery. And then the last bit of the dish is pomegranate molasses. So this is molasses made out of um, pomegranates. It's a Middle Eastern ingredient, and I love it. It's one of my favorite ingredients. It's got a nice tart where the pomegranates are sweet, and you think when they made molasses out of them that maybe that would be like a refined sugar that would be sweeter. It's not, it actually comes out really nice and tart. It's used a lot with lamb dishes and things like that. But, um, but I love it with this because it ties in with the pomegranate, the fruit. So what I do is, um, you could pour it right out of the bottle but it doesn't come out as nice. And, and I just use it like this. Drip it around, you don't want to use too much because um, cause it is tart. But that's what I really love about this dish too. It's got, to me, it's got the perfect balance, balance of sweet and tart crunchy and soft, and um, that's why not only has it got comedic value, but it's also got um, taste value. So then to unmold it, as you can see, it's just got a little bit of suction in there, so I just put it on the end, pop it out, there you go. A few seeds around. And then, a bit of the lavender honey. You can strain the lavender out if you want. If you use fresh yet, don't need to, it's actually really nice. But even the dried's okay. Some people might not like those, so you can just strain the honey out and just drizzle the honey. But um, I'll just leave it in for the moment. And then this is the other fun part. Drizzle on that. At the dish that's actually on our menu at Jonah's is about twice as high, so it's even got a better wobble value than this one. But this is what makes this dish the best is... There's no other dessert that does that. I was carrying them around on Thursday because things were a little slower on Thursday and I was going, you don't want ice cream, it doesn't wobble. You want this, because it does wobble. And um, so this is the, the panna cotta and that's how you make it. And, um,